So, title option, guess who? So it's not recording yet? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, everything right. we're doing now is recording. Say something about this video. Gaz walled in. Okay. Don't know if you can adjust that. No. Oh, no, go live there. Okay, so go live. So it's record. We are recording, but it's not called it recording alive until this is going to do what it's going to do here. And then, right. So live. So we are live. And is anybody going to come in? This is the question. Oh, that's my phone. Every time I fucking do a video, it it does this. So what we'll do is wait to see if somebody comes in, because it will come up here, I think, or somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. But that's good, we can do live still on Facebook. And then we've got, um, if I just do you, then you come in, you'll see yourself coming in. Oh, there's one watching, hello. Hello to the one viewer, how are you doing? We're, um, we're live on, uh, with a guest. I've got a special guest. And, um, I don't know if you know who he is. Oh, is that my shoulder in there? I don't know. If I move over this way a bit. Out the way. There's three people in. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. If you want to make a comment, that would be good. Can you guess who's, uh, who I've got in the studio with me? Can anybody guess who I have got in the studio today? That is the question. There he is. Uh, yeah, it's like guess who. This is the game of guess who. I'm sure some of you must know who this person is. And there's not a prize, apart from the fact that you're a really clever bastard. And there's only two people watching now. <laughs> Scared them off already. Hi, hello, Christine Chambers. Hello. Hello. I'm a bit new to, um, oh God, Bannerman. Look at that. Who is it though? This is the question. Is it? Who is this in the studio? And I've done the caps lock on, so I should do that again. And I, and I didn't, because I weren't fucking on the thing. So I'll do it again, yet again. Hello. Christine Chambers. Okay. But there's only two of it, two of us watching. What's going on? We need more. We need more, more, more. See, I've come onto Facebook because uh, YouTube is giving me my second strike. So now I've got a 14-day ban on YouTube. So I can't post any um, videos onto YouTube, and I can't um, do any lives on YouTube. So I thought, oh, what can we do? And I thought to myself, I oh, know what I can do. I will um, try a Facebook Live and see if we get anybody coming in. And there is... Um, that's really good, Christine. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> the disguise... The disguise isn't the best disguise I've ever seen. I thought it was quite a good one. The, your accent might give it away a bit more as well. Checking. <laughs> Checking. <laughs> Uh, is there anybody? Oh, there's three in here now. We've got three. We're really popular. You're far more popular than I am, that's for sure. Especially now I'm banned on YouTube again. Fucking hell. I'm fucking believed. Are you allowed to swear on Facebook Live? Or do they, do, does the AI have you? I have no idea. So, everybody, anybody, whatever. You just We're just doing a quick mess about, really. And, can I uh, take my muzzle off? Now? Yeah, you certainly can, sir. Oh, great stuff. It was your idea <laughs> anyway to do that. It weren't my idea to do that. <laughs> so here we are with the legend that is Banner Man. There he is. Good afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. There you go. Well done. Afternoon, Matthew, Matthew Perkin. Yeah, Matthew. I've been. Um, I got a second strike on. Um, uh, what's it called? YouTube. Because, and we've just reviewed, actually reviewed the video they've done, which was from the 8th of August, and it was me just saying, what is Q? And I got a, uh, 
what, what, what was it harassment and bullying yeah i didn't see any harassment or bullying yeah harassment and bullying they they and they've we just watched it because i found the video because i still got it so we watched the video back and youtube have give it pulled it down and give me my second strike and um i can't post or do live streams for 14 days because of the video that i was just reading off of wikipedia what is q and q and on and apparently it's harassment and bullying what do you reckon about that mark no harassment or bullying i didn't see any of it and i've reviewed it with you yeah so what do you make of youtube and that that sort of uh, what's going on with that i don't know to be honest i mean i've had a strike myself but because it, it was my first one they just let me off with a warning so and, and again i didn't see any uh any hate speech in what they were saying that there was but i don't know if it's robots or what al al whatever did, they call did, it did you actually did you put in a um what do they call it um an appeal i did yeah and uh, they didn't they didn't uphold it as they say so i just uploaded it to uh walden media ah there you go walden media see that's where the videos will go as well now so for the next um there's the, the there there it is just there there walden.co.uk if you haven't already subscribe to the newsletter if you go on to walden.co.uk and you subscribe to the newsletter when things like this happen there'll be a newsletter sent out with any video saying you know i've been banned um for 14 days because youtube are now the censoring anti-free speech and i didn't even didn't even do anything really honestly i should upload the video onto walden that they've put harassment and bullying harassment and bullying who the only people i really want to harass and bully now is youtube that's about what all i want to harass and uh, uh, do stuff to so mr bannerman what got you into this into this recording how long have you been uh, what got you in did, did you used to just go and audit like the auditors did or how did it start um 2001 <laughs> shall we go back to started out as a wedding videographer just for reference then in 2009 i started waking up to mainstream media now uh, they didn't seem to be telling the truth and distorting it slightly or withholding information so then I started just basically uh, learning a bit more about mainstream media, what they report on, and then I started seeing groups, you know, rising, and, you know, people had opinions, and I was learning all the, t all the time, should I say. What I found interesting was that, yeah, auditing, that's an interesting concept, because not a lot of people out there know about uh, what you can and can't do with a video camera. And when you put a video camera in front of someone, they automatically expect you can't do it, or they don't think that you, that you can. So auditing, yeah. I've tried it a few times, I find it interesting, and say we protest, I like to share people's information, what they want to say to other people, so it's not always about my views, even though some things I do, I do look at and think, well, maybe you've got a point. And th that, um, I saw, the, I think the first one I saw of you was, uh, I don't know when you went onto YouTube and it took off for you. But the one I saw was when you, you started dressing up like a copper. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, this guy's a maniac. He's going to really get into a lot of bother doing this. And it was brilliant. And I thought, that's a definite subscribe and a definite um, click of the bell. But when did, it, when did you notice? What, what happened with you? Obviously, at some point, you started doing YouTube. And it, and it started with like you know nobody watching, nobody subscribing. How many subscribers have you got now? Well, it started out uh, in 2017, I think it was, where I started uploading videos of the Sheffield Street Tree Crisis, where the Sheffield Council was cutting down trees and people were rising up and uh, stopping the, sh the council, you know, chopping down the trees. And then the SIA got brought in, then the police got brought in. And at times, we were like 30 police officers, 15 SIA, and then campaigners just saying, look, Sheffield City Council, why are you chopping these trees down? And then it led on from that. I had about 100 subscribers, and then over the two-year period with the Sheffield Street Trees it rose to about 250 and then there was someone on uh, YouTube who, who gave me a shout out because I started doing a few different things and then my subscriber base went up I started looking into the protest you know with the lockdown and things and then my subscriber base has gone up to just over 7,000 now so I'm quite impressed with you know how people do want to watch content and what's really going on that mainstream media don't seem to be covering that's it and you do a really good job i mean i watch your yeah. videos the edits are excellent um the way you come across is unique as well i think it's really really brilliant and it's good now because it's sort of 
I mean, I'm Gaz walled in on YouTube when they let when they let me fucking have a swear and whatever I do. When you know, we'll see how that appeal goes. I'm sure it won't work. And now you're um, going out more into uh, enemy territory, if you like, with the police and everything's going on. I don't know if people that are watching if they if they knew what happened because um, we both ended up in Liverpool about two weeks ago now. It was about two weeks ago and. Um, we're both uh, freelance journalists for Walden Media, Walden.co.uk. We're both on there. We've both got our pictures on there. We've both got our press passes. Now, on the day, you had your press pass with you for, in Liverpool, and you was filming in one place. And I had my press pass with me in Liverpool, and I was filming in another place. We both had cameras. <laughs> <laughs> and my experience was they had a little go with me, but when I showed them the press pass, I sort of they sort of skirted away, said, "Yeah, media, there, he's fine." Uh, what was your experience in Liverpool? Yeah, my experience. To be honest, some of the police officers they looked at the press pass and thought, "Great stuff," and they accepted it. But I, I come across one police sergeant who uh, did something overzealously, in my opinion, and because I passed a comment towards him in his direction. I did see him push another camera operator. It, it kind of made him, I, I don't know, it, it just seemed to horn in on me and then followed by two police officers and they just didn't seem to want me on the street. So yeah, they, they basically didn't believe I was a journalist and at the end of the day, if, if you don't believe I'm a journalist, then that's just your opinion. And what happened? What happened was they uh, interrogated me. They did the job at the first, but they never comprehended the fact that I was there to cover the protest as a journalist. And that's a, a, a big failing for the police, as far as I'm concerned. If you can't comprehend words being expressed, you know, no matter what paperwork you have, I'm going to say paperwork because it resembles that. And you know, it, it's it's a sad case for the police, in my, in my opinion. In, in, the, in this case, of these two police officers and a sergeant. And they they, they confiscated they, they, your equipment. Yeah, they, they deprived me of my camera equipment. Should I say? Some people would call it theft. Some people would say seizing. Yeah, and it's a bit of a controversial matter at the moment because I'm currently ongoing with that see what happens yeah hopefully hopefully um you'll get a good result with that because it's it wasn't right it, it, they shouldn't be able to take anybody's um equipment off them just because they're filming I, I don't agree with that at all i don't did they say to you under what sort of power they had to do that they did yeah and, and this is quite comical really because they said to me we're taking your camera off you but we're giving you direction to leave and the reason why we're taking your camera off you is so that you've got no reason to stay because they believed i wouldn't leave now, the strangest thing is, when once they seized the camera, they managed to press record in the van twice. And they actually basically said, you know, I had no reason to stay if they take my camera off me. So, abuse of powers, in my opinion. Yeah, because it, you were there performing a, a, a task of work anyway, which is permitted under all these fucking ridiculous guidelines for this... this um uh, Kung flu that's got a survival rate of 99.9% .9 and... Uh, you know, it's in my opinion. I don't know what your opinion is. It's uh, the whole thing's very debatable right now. The the, the measures they're taking uh, for something that um, you know, like they've even said that the um, this isn't my way of thinking. This is the uh, UK chief science advisor. Or yeah, I think he was. The, or no, is he the medical? Or well, they're both knobheads anyway. And that's harassment and bullying almost, isn't it? You know what I mean? They're a couple of knobheads, which, in my opinion, they truly are. And um, I think they're bought and paid for. They've got a valid interest in, in, in everybody getting this uh, Maxine. So they're going to earn loads of money. But he said, uh, when this was all kicking off, most people won't even get it. Those that do get it won't even know they've got it. And the very small minority that do know they've got it may need to stay in bed for a day or two, but they won't need a doctor. And the even smaller amount of that minority will, will need hospital treatment, but they'll be fine. And an even smaller, smaller, smaller group will die. And the, the thing is, if people are dying, most of them, if not, well, most of them, they've got two, 2 2.6 comorbidities already, so, and they're over 85. You know, and I think the life expectant expectancy in a normal situation in this country is something like 81. So where is the mass problem? Why are they doing what they're doing? Um, I mean, f what, for what, to what end? I've got my opinions on it. I don't know if you have, if you've got an opinion or not. I don't know if you have. Myself? 
Mm. I find it interesting how throughout history we've always had, always had seasonal flu, you know, and influenza. And I come to know the other day that seasonal influenza and flu, it's on the decline, it's very low, but yet COVID is so high. And I just wonder if it's just been rebranded or it's just, you know, you know, to, to instill fear into people, fear into people. And yet, you know, COVID-19 is a symptom of coronavirus. And just like flu, you know, it, it seems to affect people the same way. And statistically, deaths in other years have been higher than this year. And with your experience, just going back to the Liverpool and uh, the freelance journalism and the, the filming and everything that you've been doing, is it is it dis, uh, is it sort of um, deterred you from going to future events to record and document what's going on? On my experience, no, because based on the fact that since last November, when I had a headache and a bit of a runny nose, I've never had any signs or symptoms of even influenza. I just find that a bit strange. But from the police point of view, the intimidation sort of tactics, has is that, is that dis discouraged you from going to these things at all? I look at it like this. They've got a job to do, and that doesn't discourage me in any way. Because at the end of the day, it will all unfold. You know, it will all come out, just like the Nuremberg trials. You know, it, 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 unfortunately, it's new history unfolding as it is, and we need to document this as well. But no, the, the police don't deter me. No, good. I'm glad because they're not deterring me either. And uh, I'll be going out. I'm sure you'll be going out Saturday, probably. I'll be going out Saturday to f see what's about and find what's around and, and uh, document everything. Did you see the thing, And um, just slightly off topic, but well, it's sort of like the same topic, really. There's not a lot of other fucking topics going on right now, is there? Did you see the thing about, um, oh, what do they call it? Um, Speaker's Corner, where they, they were doing Speaker's Corner on Sunday. They sort of banned it. Yeah, it's uh, quite a controversial one. Again, everything's controversial about everything that's going on. You know, Speaker's Court are being you know, out in open air. You know, anybody with a camera are being asked, have you got a press pass? And that's quite on the, that's on the rise now with the police. They're asking people, have you got a press pass? And to be honest, that press pass doesn't really carry any, any weight more than anything else, apart from the fact that police think if you've got an NUGA press card, that's the only press card you can have. But they only issue half of the press cards in the country anyway. Yeah, I saw a guy, I think he was called Sam English. I don't know if you saw that, I was watching a live stream. And he had his press card and he was, uh, it was NU, it was an NUJ or it was, uh, it was affiliated or was through one of the gate unit, one of the unions. And it was, uh, apparently it was an official one. And they took his card, he gave his driving licence. And they went off and they checked everything. And then uh, when they came back, they said they weren't happy with the press card. Um, they've got his, they said, we've, this is, he was recording all this live, live streaming it. He said, fr from Speaker's Corner, and he said, um, I've, I've been given a, disper they gave him a dispersal order. And they said, we've got your driving license, we've got your name, we've got your address. If you don't leave, then obviously there'll be uh, action taken. Because that's what they're doing. They just want to, they just literally are trying to suppress uh, the, uh, the freedom of people to report on what actually is going on out in the street. I, know, I don't know if you agree with that or not. Yeah, I think it's that as well. And and actually, under the coronavirus rules, what they're currently, uh, should we say, policing, yeah, it says in Section 11, 3A, that you can go to work still if you can't work from home. Now, it's reasonable if you're a journalist to go to a place where there's something happening, like a gathering of people, because that's journalistic, you know, to go and gather the evidence, see what, what's happening. And if mainstream media did, did this kind of thing and shown it for what it was, then people like myself and Gaz, you know, we won't be out there doing this. Exactly. I, I have actually said that in a video on YouTube. If, if, and I've said that to the police when they've said, you know, why are you here? And I've said... And they, uh, they were quite reasonable with me, you know, they are just normal. That, uh, that was in uh, Bournemouth on on um, uh, Saturday, the Saturday just gone. If you haven't seen the video, um, you can look at my YouTube channel, Gaz Walled In, uh, and there's the, it's, a, it's a quite a long video, but it's the, but when I was in Bournemouth and um, there was a march down there, it was, it was good, it was interesting. The police, the Bournemouth police, uh, fair play to them, they weren't as bad, they want, it, there was intent there, they did, they did, there were efforts made to um, make a few arrests or disperse people, but I think, they got schooled a bit, uh, to be honest, from what I saw. Um, there were that, the, the gentleman they were talking to seemed to have a lot of knowledge of their, their their situation that they were in, 
and the police found it really difficult to deal with them and in the end they didn't force them to go anywhere and they all walked away amicably in the end that's on the video uh, and they carried on within the march so you know the, 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 but the, gr the group that was there marching they were quite clever they, when they stopped and the group began to get larger what they did is then as soon as the police started to amass in that area then they marched on again and, and that was it it was we were all off on a nice little hike <laughs> um, so where do you think you'll be going if you were away Saturday do you want to say if you're going somewhere and where um, my, my plans are for London on Saturday yeah same as me I'm looking I'm looking to get down there um yeah, that that should be again interesting. Needs to be documented. We need to be there because people there is there the, 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 there is an appetite for this media for this form of media, and people are interested. And it is uh, you know it, it's of national interest, and there is a high demand for it. And like you said, the mainstream media just aren't they're not doing a good enough job with it because obviously they've got a narrative they've they've, they've been given like now you know it, it, it's all about like it has been for ages so, i mean i don't watch the mainstream media i won't pay for a tv license i don't watch live tv i don't use the iplay i think it's all shit anyway um and they've got their their orders what they've got to do and, and to me now they just seem like the the political uh like for, the, for they're just putting the political party's message like we're in China or we're in Nazi Germany and, and they're trying to keep the terror going and, and, and to misinform, I would say misinform the general public of the real situation, what's really, really happening. And sadly, I think a lot of uh, English, British people in this country and, well, all the British, Scotland, everywhere, you know, they're all, fucking loads of them are buying into it and they're just it's just so brainwashed. And I think the only thing I can say to those people really is, one, do the research and really do some research, not on the fucking BBC. Start looking for other information, really start searching it out because things are getting censored. And two, turn the fucking telly off. I don't know what you have to say. Yeah, there's plenty of channels to watch that uh, show what's really going on. You know, you could draw conclusions from what the video sees. You know, and anything that the video camera sees, you know, that's a true representation to what's happening. And I'll just go to some of the little comments. There's not many of us in here. We're just having a little bit of a chat. And uh, just like I say, because I've been kicked off of um, uh, YouTube and uh, just with, we're here with Bannerman, just showing Bannerman a few bits of what I get up to, how I go about doing these sort of things. And just we're just like exchanging ideas and things and uh, becoming, you know, more friends and, 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 and uh, colleagues. And um, Matthew Perkins says, they are saying it will be illegal to video police attacking protesters soon, I heard. I mean, you, you can't fucking make it up, can you? I mean, that is, isn't that not communist fucking China? It's dark times we're heading into, I think. You know, so what is, I mean, overall, what is the, what the fuck is going on? I mean, what is the, what's the, see, that's the thing that concerns me. What is the end aim? It, you know, I know I, I've looked at it now with the Great Reset. I mean, I never thought I'd be in a situation where I was having to study what a fucking virus is or looking... I'm a caterer. You know, that was my business. I was a caterer. Uh, and I weren't interested in, in, in you know, not really... In politics a bit, uh, mainly because I, I, I shout at the telly when I was watching it when I came back from Spain. And my missus said, you know what you said? If ever you had to come back to Spain against your own free will, it, the, there's a, the political system's gone fucking tits up and you're going to get involved in it. So I did that, and I've, I've, I've looked in various political parties once we re-established re in the UK. And, but now I never thought, I mean, it li literally does feel like, I've said this a few times, I feel like I've been in a car crash. I'm in a coma now. I'm actually in a coma. And this is the fucking nightmare I'm having while I'm in my, com in my coma. <laughs> How's it been for you? Yeah, I know where you're coming from. I understand, I comprehend. I don't like using the word understand because when you're around the police, you know. Yeah, I don't understand. When the police, as far as the police are concerned, I don't understand at all. I'm not understanding. I do not uh, let them stand above me uh, and that's it, you know. And I think it's going to get, the worry is, I mean, I would like to see personally more people with a view that this is all wrong and tyrannical to actually start rising and to really make some noise about it everywhere because I think a lot of people are getting uh, shot down by, um, you know, you're, you're killing granny, you know, you're killing, you're doing this. 
in 2017, 2018, I think it was, there was estimated to be in excess of 50,000 deaths uh, attributed to the, the to the flu. And, that, and there was nobody batted an eyelid. Most people you speak to, I mean, a lot more people are aware of that now, but I wasn't aware of that. I mean, I wasn't aware. I mean, I, you, you know, if you'd have said to me, well, the flu, you know, it's winter like now. We're coming into the winter. Pe thousands of people are going to die of the flu, especially old people. Do you know what I'd have said? Of course they fucking are. They always do. Since when haven't they? And the thing is, it when, since when did old people not get ill and fucking die? I mean, what, what is going on? Yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's shocking. That's all I can say. And it's an eye opener as well. And people should really tune into what's really going on, and look at the mainstream media, and look at what they say. Like things, you know, like people are testing positive for it, but they're not. You know, when they're dying, but they're not dying of it. You know, it's the words. You know, they're starting to, uh, you know, give give things away now. I think. Yeah, for me, it's. Uh, I just, I still don't think. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if enough people are uh, waking up to it. I mean. I think that's one of the things. Well, it's not. I mean, I go out if I, it, like I go out and I see people in the street wearing a mask, and I think, why the fuck are you wearing a mask? You know, there's not even. I I, I wish one wish I could have is that they didn't make it mandatory for for people to wear masks on public transport and in because that is just that is just to me that is just fear inducing constantly reinforcing that there is this deadly 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 fucking pandemic and and there isn't the, the evidence isn't there it isn't there i've i've looked at numbers i've seen other other things like talk radio is quite good they have people on um, medical professionals and they're even saying you know some and that's another thing that really fucking annoys me like i say i'm just a humble caterer right i'm not no mad scientist i ain't got degrees yin yang and all this mad expensive education i've never had any of that but there's thousands of people millions of people out there that have got all of that what the fuck are they doing have they i mean when i lived in spain we used to say about the tourists you get these really clever people and the minute they're going to get on a plane to go on holiday, just before they leave their front door, it's like they take their brain out of their head and put it in a fucking jar and stick it on the mantelpiece. And then they go off on holiday. And then they get mugged and they get fucking robbed or they get conned. And it's like, you, you, that would never happen to you in England under a normal situation. But because you've gone on holiday, it's like you've took your, your brain out your, your head, put it in the jar, and you're going to come back to it in two weeks. And with this, it seems like the same. Like all these so-called, uh, or is it just being suppressed? I don't know. I don't know what you think about that, Mark. Yep. Yeah, um, in fact, it's funny you should mention about being brain, you know, taking your brain out, because I did take my brain out once, and I washed it, put it back, and I'm all clean again now <laughs> from all the rubbish, you know, that's been uh, stacking up over the years. Yeah. So, you know. I, w I won't carry us on much longer because it's only we're having a, just a little j bit of uh, general chit chat. But um, on on the fact of what this is all meant to achieve, I mean, me personally, I'll give you my view on it. I don't think this is anything to do with uh, what they're doing. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying there isn't uh, some sort of um, Cove SARS Cove two. But it's, to me, it's not the, the, the deadly, even on the government's own website, on the 19th of March, if you want to look, if you Google when did the UK government downgrade COVID-19 to a non-consequentious infectious disease, it's on their website now. You go there, go to .gov.uk, there'll be a, a heading and it will say, as you scroll down, it will say, um, state, I think it says COVID-19 status. You click that and uh, it will say, or it did say, I'm sure it will today, uh, that on the 19th of March, COVID-19 was downgraded to a non-consequential infectious disease. I also think at this point, uh, that what the, the whatever it is, is the, something like the 19th in the rankings of things that kills people in this country. It's the 19th. Now, that, to me, doesn't warrant what the fuck they're doing, decimating my business, you, uh, all the other small businesses, uh, but if you notice, all the big super super companies, Amazons and the like, their 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 profits are through the fucking roof, through the roof. Where all the little little independents now, we're all on the breadline, and it's just going to get worse. I I can't see what the end game is. Um, I've got my own my my view on it's quite dark, and I don't know. I won't get into it on here today, but. 
I don't know if Mark's got an opinion on what he thinks or if he's got an idea what the end game may be. Well, you mentioned size curve too. In 2001, around about the turn of this century, uh, 2002, size curve one actually raised its head, didn't it? And uh, it it disappeared. Then it came back again in about 2004. Then it went again, and and that's it. It's been gone ever since. But since then, we've had different you know strains of flu, H1N1, bird flu, and all these different things. And what what I find different about this one, SARS CoV two, you know, the coronavirus is governments are, have they ever lied in the past? Mainstream media have they ever lied in the past? No, in from what I can see, mainstream media and the government are singing from the same hymn sheet, and this SARS CoV two and coronavirus doesn't seem right to me the way it's all been dealt with. Yeah, heading for dark times. That's all I can say really. I think. Brilliant. Well, it's been nice to have Mark with me today, and uh, I'll put this video will go up onto wardian.co.uk. And uh, it's been it's brilliant. I, I think it's gone really well. Thank you for the few of you that have come in. My, my Facebook presence isn't brilliant, to be honest, as you can probably see. But yeah, it's good to see. I'll just read that comment from Matthew before I go. I was in Asda with my daughter, obviously maskless. Well done. Yesterday at a retail park, and I honestly felt like I was in some evil dark uh, movie. Must have been must have been two hundred muzzled barnacles in there in there <laughs> uh, it was really tough but i just kept looking at them right uh right oh, sorry i had to do more Might as well kept looking at them right in their, <laughs> their eyes uh, they have tried to pull this pandemic off for at, le at least three out of four times in the last 10 years uh, brilliant me uh, me too i stare at them crazy zombies that's from uh linda hanley Anyway, guys, thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll knock this on the head now, and a uh, uh, last word from Mark. Yeah, thank you very much for watching, and thanks, guys, for this opportunity. It's an insight. I've never done one of these before, and uh, <laughs> maybe in the future I could do a bit more. Yeah, that'll be great. That'll be great to have you back, mate. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. You take care of yourselves.